Hello viewers. Today we have a box of some pretty unusual telephones to take a look at. I know I haven't been doing a whole lot of telephone videos lately. I just haven't been acquiring any telephones because I gotta save the money but they only wanted ten dollars for this whole lot and at that price I had to have it. So here it is. Uh, some of these are more rare than others. So there's some other little bits and pieces in here. Anyways, let's take a look at what I'm most interested in this particular lot. The Uniden EXR2460. And this is probably the rarest phone in the lot here. These don't show up very often at all. And I'm really curious about this model because you can see it has the same physical design as the 900 megahertz telephones. So it will be interesting to compare this one to the performance of a 900. Um, and this is the only model I can think of that has this physical size that's not a 900. So let's... Um, Let's open this up and take a quick look. I believe it's supposed to be complete. I don't know if it's used or not. It looks like all the pieces are here. We have the thing for the, the base. We have the handset itself, which is heavily used, but uh, it doesn't look like it was abused. I think it was just used. Actually, it's quite heavily used. And all the buttons are worn down and everything. Um, I guess these rubber buttons probably don't work anymore, but we can fix that. The clip is in here. The power cord is in here. Multiple phone cords are in here. Um, I'm going to leave those out of the box because I just don't need them in there. I doubt they're original. That's good. Back in here. Oh, cool. We even have the manual and all the documentation. Looks like you got a quick setup guide. Some other things in here. What is this? Yeah, there's uh, all the documentation is here. That's pretty cool. Alright, good. So, in my opinion, this piece alone is worth the ten dollars. That piece of the battery. Let's see if there is a battery in here. If there is, we'll take it out. If there is, we'll take it out. See, there's a little bit of corrosion on the contacts. Yep, there is. It's just starting to leak, so hopefully that got caught in time. I think we can clean that up pretty easily. That's good. And that's just going to get tossed because oops, it's of no use to me. Still in the original plastic, so it's in pretty much flawless condition. Alright, that's piece number one. And then we'll go with the second most rare piece and probably second most interesting to me. I don't know if this is... I guess this probably is the original box. 
com dial telephone systems that's not a brand I'm familiar with. Don't think that has anything to do with the phone, it's just packaging information. This is a 500 set, I believe, is the, the proper model number for this. There is a telephone number on there, so we'll just cover that up in the video. Um, now, this is kind of a weird one. There's something down here at the bottom which is not typically there. I don't know exactly what that is or what it does. It may be some kind of a button. Now I'm also noticing that the hook switch has kind of an anomaly in the sense that this side is white and that side is a standard clear thing. They do push down at the same time. The cord appears to be hardwired in. I imagine this is the original cord, and it has the wall um, things be hardwired right into the wall. So this is probably a replacement cord that somebody put on over the years as the telephone system got modernized. The dial is plastic, which I, I've never seen before. Usually those are metal. It's branded uh, Stromberg on the back here. And on the back, or on the bottom, final inspection 888, so perhaps this is from 1988. What is that to 83? 1983, yeah, I can read numbers. Or maybe not, who knows. The um, handset cord is in remarkably good condition considering its age, especially considering that it's got to be original because it's one of these hardwired ones. Although I suppose if this person was, was so inclined to replace the line, perhaps they've replaced this at some point over the years, but that's uh, in perfect condition. This carries the Stromberg name as well. Let's see what kind of microphone this has in it. It does have the classic carbon microphone. Now there's something in here which looks to be some kind of a schematic and I'm wondering if this will be able to help me fix some other phones I have that don't ring because this appears to have all the connections and the ring uh, information so that's, that's some pretty neat documentation to have I'm guessing these were the, the punch outs to put in the center of the rotary dial to put the telephone number on. And that's, I, I'm pretty sure that's all the original documentation. There is another piece of documentation that was provided with this. I don't think it's original to the phone. Uh, but I'll show it momentarily as so I put this back in here. Okay, so that was the original, that, that silver cord is the original cord. This is the jack that it would have uh, 
been used with. Just put the screws in there. And then a piece of documentation that was included but is not original is instructions on how to remove the road redial for cleaning or for changing the, the number label. And it looks like this came from uh, a website. I'm not sure what kind of information is on that website. I don't know if it's a telephone website or I just happen to have this on there. Anyway, so there's that. That's pretty cool. That doesn't show up too often. And it's interesting because the, the, the 2500 sets that are still sold today come in a very similar kind of packaging. So. It's remarkable how the design on those telephones really has not changed over the past 50 years. Next we have a Uniden telephone. This is, uh, well, anyways, um, this is a 2.4. I've never used one myself, so I'm not going to really make any judgments on this, but I believe these were the, the budget model of the day. Well, still uses a... Uh, it's like Sadie's going to join the video and close the door. It still uses a BT905 and um, Standard 3.6 volts, uh, 600 milliamps, 0602. I always forget how to read these date codes. You are year, month, month. Okay, so it's from 2006. So, excuse me, this was very late into the uh, into the world of cordless phones um, as far as 2.4 goes. They were long uh, obsolete by 2006. Looks like there's some kind of an anomaly with the clip there, but at least the clip is there. Manual is here. I should put this back in there. Manual, which is needs to be flattened out. Power adapter that's pretty smooth. This is one of those compact phones, which is why I say it's probably nothing to write home about as far as performance goes. Because these are one of those form over function products, which I'm not a huge fan of form over function. But anyway, here's that. Model I've never used, so that'll be interesting to experiment with. And this battery's probably still good. Let's see who made it. GPI, yeah, it's probably still good, so we'll keep that. Um, not in the phone, of course. Side. And the last telephone, I don't know what that is, I think the last telephone is going to be an AT&T telephone with some crazy contraption holding everything together. That's kind of clever. Now I have uh, the variant of this that has the screen and it doesn't work, I think. I don't really remember. Um, but this is kind of cool. Um, if this has the answering machine, I think it does. I do like the voice in that answering machine, the old AT&T voice. Um, but nothing too interesting there. Oops. I don't know what, what this would have gone to, but uh, there's some other miscellaneous documentation in here. Let's see if I can get the rest of it out. Okay, this would have gone to a trim line phone. I'm not sure. Uh, what happened to this trim line phone? But I don't have it. Didn't come in the box, but it's cool documentation to hold on to. 
we have a Stratatech uh, surge protector suppresses up to 330 volts which is not, not very high but there's that. It looks like it has telephone surging protection capabilities as well. I would imagine it has electrical surging. Yeah, it must because that label. Um, stupid design because when you plug this into your outlet it takes up both outlets, but at least it has two. So you, even though it blocks one, you still get the same amount of outlets. I guess it's not so bad. It's it's just a stupid design when there's only one outlet on the thing. Um, so that's great. Probably can make a use out of that. This, I don't know... I don't know what this is. It looks like a caller ID box or an answering machine color ID box. Very small. Also with the manual. And there's some other documentation in here. Wow. <laughs> everything, everything was so expensive back then. Of course, you bought one and it lasted your, your entire life, so you got what you paid for. Alright, um, a couple other things in there. I think they're just uh, DSL filters. We have this Z blocker, model Z230PJ DSL filter. I don't have too much of a use for these because I don't have DSL service at the moment, but I'll hold on to that anyways. Yeah, another one, and another one. This, uh, is this from the same company? Yeah, it's from the same company. And uh, I'm not sure what this does. It's called an Excelus, Excelsus. Swapper model S L1 slash L2. I don't know if this company is still around and or if that website's active anymore, but I have to go take a look at that and find out what that thing is. This is uh I'm not sure why it's labeled that way. If this is just a regular old splitter, which I think it is looking at the number of wires in there on blur I can make use of this and depending on what this is I could probably make use of this as well you have one of these made in China you can definitely make use of that and we have a regular old phone cord it looks like we have a couple of see what these are. I think these are short cords. We have, oh there's actually four here. Four uh, short cords for wall mounting. And then we have one, two, three, four regular length cords. Five. And a relatively long cord. So, this I can probably make use of at some point. These, I have 150 of them by now, but we'll put those in the box along with them, and they'll have a grand old party in the box. And, yeah, they'll probably never get used, but whatever. Um, so that's that for $10. I think that was a really good deal. Got a, two really neat pieces here to take a look at. So, thank you for watching. Comment, subscribe, and out.